Good afternoon, everyone. We're here to um, for the Sabbath, and tomorrow, of course, is going to be the wave sheaf. Now, I've seen in a lot of Sabbath keeping and feast keeping congregations that the wave sheaf is something that's kind of overlooked. But we like to keep it. It's, I mean, it's not a real Sabbath for us, but it is the time when the pr uh, priest comes to wave the uh, offering. And it's time to begin to count to Pentecost. In Levit Leviticus 23, starting in verse 1, And Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the ch uh, children of Israel, and say to them, The set feast of Yahweh, which you shall proclaim to be a holy convocation, even these are my set apart, are my set of, uh, feast. Six days shall you work be done, but on the seventh day is a Sabbath, a solemn rest, a holy convocation. You shall do no manner of work. It is a Sabbath to Yahweh in all your dwellings. These are the fe set feasts of Yahweh, even holy convocations, which you shall proclaim in their appointed times and se uh, appointed season. In the first month on the fourteenth month at evening is Yahweh's Passover. And on the fifteenth day of the same month is the feast uh, is the feast of unleavened bread. To in the first day you shall have a holy convocation. You shall do no servile work, but you shall offer a, offer an offering made by fire to Yahweh. Seven days in the set the seventh day is a holy convocation. You shall do no servile work. And Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them. When you have come into the land which I will give to you, and shall reap the harvest of it, then you shall bring the sheaf of the first fruit of your harvest to the priest, and he shall wave the sheaf before Yahweh to be accepted for you. On a day after the Sabbath, the priest shall wave it. And in the day when you wave the sheaf, you shall offer a lamb without blemish, blemish a year old for a burnt offering to Yahweh. And the meal offering of it shall be two tenths of an ephah of flour, fine flour mingled with oil, an offering made by fire to Yahweh for a sweet savior, and the drink offering of it shall be wine, the fourth part of a hen. And you shall eat neither, neither bread, nor parched grain, nor fresh ears until this very day, until you have brought the oblation of your Elohim. It is a statute throughout, forever throughout your generations in all of your dwellings. And you shall count the day after the Sabbath from the day that you brought the wave sheaf of offering seven Sabbaths. And there shall be uh, complete even to the day after Sabbath. Sabbath you shall number fifty days and you shall offer a new meat offering to Yahweh. You shall bring out of your habitations two wave loaves of two tenths parts of an ephah, and they shall be a fine flour. They shall be baked with leaven for the first fruits to Yahweh. So the wave sheaf does a cup does several things. One, it begins to count uh, to Pentecost. Two, is also um, it's also Yeshua. He was our wave offering. And for the wave offering to be um, to be any good, it has to be accepted. And we go to Luke twenty-four. And it, it says there to be accepted for you. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. And eight. We go to Luke chapter twenty-four. And I'll go up to, um, I'll read a little bit starting off in uh, Luke 23, 50, just to kind of get a little context. And behold, a man named Joseph, who was a counselor, a good and righteous man, he had not consented to the counsel indeed, a man of uh, Arimathea, a city of the Jews, which was looking for the kingdom of Yahweh. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Yeshua. And he took it down and wrapped it in linen cloth and laid him in a tomb 
that was hewn in stone where never uh, man has yet lain and it was the day of the preparation and the Sabbath drew on and the women who had come with him out of Galilee followed after and behold the tomb and how the body was laid and they returned and prepared spices and ointments and on the Sabbath they needed they rested according to the commandment but on the first day of the week at early dawn they came to the tomb bringing the spices which they had prepared and they found the t uh, stone rolled away from the tomb and they entered in and found not the body of the master Yeshua and it came to pass that while they were perplexed about behold two men stood by them in da dazzling apparel and they were afraid and they bowed their faces to the earth and said to them why seek the living among the dead he is not here but he has been raised and this is important first part before dawn he's already risen Yeah, there's no Easter Sunday. It has nothing to do with uh, rabbits laying eggs or any. I mean, laying uh, eggs. This is uh, this is what we celebrate. He's already arisen. He is not here, but he has been raised. Remember how he spoke to you when he was in, yet in Galilee, saying that the sons of man must, son of man must be delivered up into the hands of sinful men and be impaled and the third day rise again that time he died uh, Wednesday just before sunset three days three nights in the grave and he rose uh, that uh, just before sunset on the Sabbath that does uh, several things that's that proves the lunar Sabbath is incorrect it saves mankind, it completes the uh, plan of salvation. All we're doing now is we're coasting along for him to come back as a, a warrior king. And we're supposed to be preaching, telling the people about his wonderful kingdom. Repent for the kingdom of Yah is at hand. But we'll get to that. He is not here. He has been raised. Remember how he spoke to you when he was yet in Galilee, saying that the Son of Man must be delivered up into the hands of sinful men and be impaled and the third day rise again. And they remembered his words, and they returned from the tomb and told all these things to the eleven and to all the rest. Now they were Miriam Magdalene, Johanna, and Miriam the mother of Jacob, and the other women with them told these things to the apostles. And when these words appeared on the sight as they in their sight as idle talk, and they disbelieved them. But Peter rose and ran to the tomb, and stooping and looking, he sees the linen cloths by themselves. Uh, he departed to his home, wondering at which that which has come to pass. And behold, two of them were going, were that day to a village named uh, Emmaus, which was sixty furlong from uh, Jerusalem. And they came with each other, and all they communed with each other of all these things which had happened. And it came to pass while they communed and questioned together that Yeshua himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were held that they should not know him. And he said to them, what communications are these that you have with one another as you walk? And they stood still looking, and one of them named Cleopas answered them to him, Do you alone sojourn in, sojourn in Jerusalem and not know the things which have come to pass in these days? And he, and he said to them, What things? And they said to him, The things concerning Yeshua the Nazarene, who was a prophet, mighty indeed and the word before Elohim and all the people and this is and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him up to be condemned to death and impaled him but we hope that it was he who should redeem Israel yes and besides all, all this it is now the third day since these things come to pass 
Moreover, certain women of our company amazed us, having been early at the tomb. And when they found not his body, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. And certain of them were with us when we uh, went to the tomb and found it, so as the women had said, but they saw not. And he said, O foolish man, and slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary to Messiah to suffer these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning from Moses and from the prophets, he interpreted to them all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. And he drew near to the village where they were going, and he made as though he would go further. And they constrained him, saying, Remain with us, for it is towards evening, and the day is now far spent. And he went to remain with them. And it came to pass, when he had sat down with them to meet, he took the bread and blessed it, breaking, and he gave to them. And their eyes were open, and they knew him, and he vanished out of their sight. And they said to one another, Was this not our... Was not our heart burning within us while he spoke to us in this way, while he opened to us the scriptures? And it came to be at the very hour, and they rose up and at the very hour returned to Jerusalem, found the eleven gathered together, them that were with them, saying, The teacher has been raised, indeed, he has appeared to Simon. And they rehearsed the things that had happened that way, and how he was known to them at the breaking of the bread. And as he spoke these things, he, he himself stood in the middle of them and said to them, Peace be unto you. But they were terrified and frightened, and supposed they beheld a spirit. And he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do you do questionings arise in your heart? See my hands and feet that it is? I myself handle me and see for a spirit is, has not flesh and bones? as you behold me having. And then when he said uh, when he said this, he showed him his hands and his feet. And while they are still disbelieved for joy and wondered, he said to him, Have you anything to eat? And they gave him a piece of bro broiled fish. And he took and ate before them. And he said to them, These are my words which I spake, spoke to you while I was yet with you, that all things, all things must need be fulfilled, which are written in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms concerning me. And he opened their mind that, he might un that they might understand the scriptures. And he said to them, In this matter it is written that the Messiah should suffer and rise again from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name to all the nations, beginning in Jerusalem, you are witnesses of these things, and behold, I f send forth the promise of my Father upon you, but stay you in the city until you be clothed with power from on high. And he led them until they were over against Bethany, and he lifted his hands and blessed them. And it came to pass that when he blessed them, he parted from them and was carried to heaven. And we go to Revelations chapter 4. And these things I saw, and behold, a door opened in heaven. And as the first voice, I heard a voice as a trumpet speaking with me, one saying, Come up here, and I will show you all these things which must come pass after this. Immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, there is a throne set in heaven, and one sitting on the throne, and he that was sat was to look upon like a jasper stone, and a sardius, and there was a rainbow all round the throne, like an emerald to look upon. And all round the throne were twenty-four thrones, and upon the thrones I saw twenty-four elders sitting there, arrayed in white garments, and on their heads with crowns of gold. And out of the thrones proceeded lightnings and voices and thunders, and there were seven lamps of the fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of Elohim. And before the throne it was, as it were, a sea of glass like crystal. And in the midst of the throne and all around the throne, four living creatures, full of eyes, before and behind. 
And the first creature was like a lion, the second creature like a calf, and the third creature had the face of a man, and the fourth creature was like a flying eagle. Each one of these creatures represents the four brigades of Israel. Dan to the north, which is represented by the eagle. Ephraim to the west, which is represented by the bull or the ox. Reuben to the south, which is represented by the face of the man. And of course Judah, which is the lion, which is towards the east. And the four living creatures, having each one of them six wings, are full of eyes around and within, and they had no rest day and night, saying, Holy, holy, holy is Yahweh El Shaddai, who was, and who is, and is who to come. And then the living creatures gave glory and honor and thanks to him who sits on the throne, to him that, that lives forever and ever. The, Twenty-four elders shall fall upon, down before him that sits on the throne, and they shall worship him that lives forever and ever, and shall cast their crowns before the throne, saying, You are worthy, O king, and our Elohim, to receive the glory and the honor and the power, for you did create all things, and because of your will they were and were created. And in Revelation chapter 5, I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written inside and on the back, closed, sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a great voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to loosen the seals of? And no one in the heaven or on earth or under the earth was able to open the book or to look on it. And I wept much because there was no one found worthy to open the book or to look on it. And one of the elders said to me, Weep not, behold, the, whole, the lion that is of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has overcome to open the book and the seven seals of it. And he saw the, in the middle of the throne and of the four living creatures and in the middle, the midst of the elders, a lamb standing as though it had been killed, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of Yahweh, sent forth unto all the earth. And he came, and he took out of the right hand of him which sat on the throne. And when he sat taken the book, and the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell down before the lamb, having each one a harp and a golden bowl full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints and they send a new song you are worthy to take the book and open the seals of it for you were killed and did purchase to Yahweh with your blood of every tribe and tongue and people and nation and made them to be our Elohim <clears throat> a kingdom a priest and they reign on the earth and that is why we celebrate and um, that is why we celebrate the wave sheep. To, uh, we will be celebrating tomorrow. And I hope everyone we um, think about this. And uh, and this is the uh, one of the plan of salvations. Yeshua had um, become our sacrifice. He has become our Passover and our wave sheep. And one day we're going to be uh, sitting up the, on earth. As part of his kingdom, we're going to be priests and kings of Elohim. Yahweh bless and keep every one of you on these special days.